like, comment, share, and subscribe. Pause the video right now to check out my social media, my radio show, and that drummerguy.com. And most of all, enjoy the following presentation. Um, so, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to be able to uh, do this interview to talk about the brand new album from Primitive Man, Caustic, which is coming out this Friday through Relapse. Yeah, man, of course. Thank you for um, asking or wanting to or doing it or whatever it works. <laughs> well, not a problem. I mean, I've been a huge fan of the band over the last few years, and uh, being able to talk about the brand new uh, second full length from you guys, I mean, it's it's awesome to see that you guys have uh, been able to get together for a full full length this time around. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about about it i we did all that stuff in between and in between scorn and, and caustic and it was all fun and, and everything but i've really been waiting to like put out a, a decent full-length record you know what i mean oh absolutely so, uh, so with that in mind what went into the writing process for the new album um well i don't know for this one we kind of had some skeletons of some songs um that we were working on and then we had to do like a real hard year of like really extensive touring and so because of that and we had we you know we'd had this goal to put out another record and write a full length and do all this stuff so because we had all this touring com coming up we just kind of took the skeletons of the songs and started kind of writing a, a few of the songs while on the road um and then like testing them out on live audience <laughs> um and then after we got home we just kind of from all the touring and everything we just kind of finished it up so it took about a year and a half to write the entire thing um but we did like all of it together in the jam room or on tour so you know i might have like a riff idea or a song idea or whatever that i bring but all of this stuff was formed together you know in those two ways so, so what was it like uh using uh audiences uh to test out the songs before you went and uh finish the writing and the recording for the songs um well uh, you know so sometimes it was cool and sometimes it was really shitty like uh, you know because we were on tour with magruder grind in europe trying this shit and so sometimes you know so so one of the songs that we had a, a skeleton for was Inevitable. And Inevitable is like a second to last song on the record. It's super long. I think it's like, and, um, you know, that one is so grueling and slow. And when we were originally writing it, it was even a little bit longer than that. So depending on the audience, it would really determine how the rest of the night was going to go for the Doom Band on tour with Magruder Grind. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and like we we tried that shit in Japan too with weekend nachos and it was the same thing but with that one it was Commerce which is a I think a four song on the album and um, same thing a really long doom song and we're on tour with like kind of a hardcore band you know? so sometimes it was cool other times it didn't go so good but I don't know we kind of learned like because a lot of it is that we kind of learned how things sound in a live situation and then we like cut some stuff down and, and altered some things so so, you know, even if the audiences weren't super into those moments, we still were playing old stuff that people could kind of hang on to, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's actually a really cool idea to do that. I mean, especially when uh, you're playing with an audience that uh, may not be as familiar with your stuff. I mean, wh whether you're touring with Magruder Grind or with Weekend Nachos, I mean, they're not necessarily Doom fans that are out at that show. So it's it's a cool way to be able to test the waters like that. Yeah, man, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. It's like we're supporting these fans anyway. We had an agenda that we wanted to see through. So we would play through, like, some of our kind of mid-paced shit from, like, the... We have an EP called Homos Where the Hatred Is. So we were playing, like, stuff off of that and then a couple of songs off of Scorn and then we would bust this stuff out at the end you know and just to kind of see how it goes so, yeah. you know it was cool and we did it but I hope that the next time we're writing a full length that we're just like at home for the year writing it instead of having to like be in this insane touring schedule trying to finish this you know oh yeah I mean when you're when you are in that comfortable environment when you are able to take your time with it when you don't have to worry about the pressures of touring and everything like that when you can just focus on the songwriting I mean that can definitely help but you know I can say from the fan perspective I mean I really love what happened with Caustic I mean I just I love the atmosphere that's going on there I mean it feels absolutely crushing and I think it's a great representation of what you guys can do oh thank you I appreciate that very much no, not a problem. So, with that in mind, I mean, with having those songs and uh, trying them out uh, during the touring before you got into the recording process, how much did that affect the rest of the album when you were thinking of writing songs? Um, well, that you know, that was 
what, just like how it would feel in a live situation? Yeah. Oh, well, we're always thinking about that because we're such a live band. We do so much touring and stuff. I mean, you know, we don't, we don't, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's not really an accurate answer. I mean, we think about what it might be like live, but when we're writing in the rehearsal space, I mean, we're just kind of going for what we think sounds the best. You know what I mean? But with those two songs that we did on the Magruder Ryan tour in particular, they were just like so long and there's so much experimentation going on with that shit that uh, I felt like that really helped those songs come together because I think at one time, Inevitable was like 17 minutes of material, you know? Oh, wow. So I don't yeah, so I don't think that it would have come out. It would have come out as good. And then by the time we got around to writing the rest of the record, and when we were at home, we already had like two songs that were twenty five minutes together long. You know, so we were kind of trying to like. I mean, I want to say we kind of wanted to have like some shorter songs, like My Will, like some straightforward, just heavy ass songs that weren't so slow and long. And you know what I mean. So I don't think that it was more us thinking about what it's like in a live setting, but more thinking about the album as a whole and as a complete Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, well, I, well, I mean, I don't think there's really a wrong way to go about that, but uh, I think that's a, a great representation of it it's because, you know, it's like uh, not having the chance to be able to hear these songs in a live setting yet. I mean, I think they all work together really well when it comes into the album form. I mean, with each song going into the next, I mean, it really flows together in a great way. Yeah, thanks. Well, we wanted to have that for this. We wanted to have like a really cohesive, put together record like for this one you know we were really trying to write like a good album and good songs and still retain being heavier than ever you know what i mean so that i guess that that was our main goal and our main focus through all of this stuff yeah and that was another thing i was going to mention too i mean especially from like the production and the tones and everything going on i mean this is easily the heaviest stuff that you guys have done so far i mean everything with it just sounds so crushing especially in the production i mean did that take a lot of effort to be able to get the right uh tones and everything for the recorded product um well you know dave otero is pretty awesome he let me play through my entire rig in the studio we worked with him before dave knows where we're coming from so it was like pretty easy for us because we worked with him for so many years and I've worked with him with other bands like I probably had a recording relationship with Diego Tero since I think like 2004 or something so uh, so it wasn't all that difficult really um, and we had two weeks in there so we got to like if we didn't think we were playing something slow enough we got to try it again because we had the time if we felt like something was too fast we could try it again because we had the time so I, I think it was it wasn't so hard to find the tones because we'd done it before with him but it was really nice to have the luxury to like go back and do shit exactly how we wanted it to be, you know? Oh yeah, without question. I mean, when you do have that feeling of being rushed in the studio, you're always going to feel like there's parts that you wish you could have changed or uh, whether it's uh, the tones or uh, the tempo or whatever the case is. But the fact that you guys were able to go back and make everything the way that you want it to be, I think it definitely paid off. Yeah, man, and me too. And I, and I really hope that the next time that we go and record with Otero that we have that much time again just because it worked out so well like we recorded scorn in three days and same as with uh home is where the hatred is and all of those split tracks that we did all of that shit was kind of most of them were all recorded in the same session i think it was the same thing it was like three days to do everything you know what i mean oh wow yeah i mean i mean the fact that you guys were able to work with that uh three-day pressure but then now being able to have that experience being able to go with a couple weeks i mean there's so much more you can add to it mm -hmm. well, I, you know i got to do all the noise interludes and and that sort of thing and really make those just right you know because there's a certain amount of randomness to that stuff so I, you know it was nice to be able to do that as well i don't know there was just so much more that we were able to do with this record because we had the time and we were just so full of ideas when we went in there and when we were writing this it just kind of I don't know, I couldn't have asked for it to come together better, you know? And with that in mind, with the noise interludes that's going on, uh, not, not being as familiar with uh, writing my own noise material, how do you know to go about uh, what you're looking for when it comes to those interludes? Um, well, I have an idea and a vibe and a concept, and I know that that might sound silly because there's no lyrics. I am thinking about the same kind of shit that I'm thinking about when I'm writing my quote-unquote normal primitive man songs. So I kind of already know sonically what I want. So it's just about me like being able to pull all my equipment together to get that, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, 
it, I definitely think they worked off amazingly well with it. I mean, like w with those interludes being able to go between the crushing uh, full length songs that are going on there, I think it's a nice little break in between. Thanks. I uh, have gotten mixed reviews. <laughs> well, I guess just like for me, it's like I, I like a good change of pace. I mean, like, especially when it comes to like Doom and something like that. I mean, like if it, it's nice to have just like a little variation, even if it is just like a little interlude moments or something like that. So having something that's like almost completely different. I mean, it's really cool to see. Oh, thanks. And, and we, we put out like a, a double LP of Throne and Experimental Noise also. And a lot of people, I guess, don't really know that. So it's always been a part of Primitive Man. Even on Thorn, there's like noise stuff on there. But we just wanted to make it more of a thing for this release because we're we're doing it live now and, and all that, you know. So we wanted to, it to kind of represent where the band is at now as well. So. Oh, that totally makes sense. And um, speaking of that, uh, you did mention there's a little bit of mixed reviews when it comes to the noise interludes from the album. But I also see yesterday that uh, Noisy... Uh, released a full stream of the album. Uh, have you had much of a chance to hear like uh, receptions from yesterday uh, as far as the stream goes? Um, I mean, you know, I'm a, I've like had some friends reach out to me and stuff and say that they were really stoked on it, but I haven't, I've been so busy that I haven't really gotten to take a, a minute to look to see what anyone has said. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, with all the press that's going on, you know, like uh, the upcoming touring and then just like uh, everyday life as well. I mean, it's it's great that yeah. you guys were able to take the take the time to be able to uh, put this album together, make the full length, and you know, just like uh, being able to continue on it as Primitive Man. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it and super stoked. There was a time where I didn't think that we would ever make it to this album, so it's nice that we did. You know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, and and speaking of of the band as well, I mean. Uh, you guys are already going to be going back on tour at the end of the month, uh, going on tour with Bell Witch. Uh, how did that whole tour come to be? Um, so I've been friends with those dudes for a long ass time, um, and since before Bell Witch was a band. Um, and I don't know, they had an album coming out. We did. We were just kind of talking. We always wanted to do some shows together, and uh, it just worked out perfectly with both of us releasing records and needing to do a tour. So it'll be cool because we have such a great relationship with them already. I I've like done a tour with the drum jesse before with two of our older bands so it's just gonna be a, a real blast being out with those guys and plus they're you know they're an amazing band too you know so i think that we complement each other sonically but on different ends of the i guess like doom spectrum you know yeah i was i was definitely gonna say that it's i mean it's like uh, you guys do two different variations of doom but it fits so well together and i imagine like anyone that's able to make it out to those shows i mean it's gonna be an amazing night of doom for everybody i mean i'm really excited to go with them i I, I, you know, we've gotten to tour some cool bands this year. Like, we got to go out with Weed Eater, and that was super fun, and, and do some stuff like that. But I think that we are going to fit with Bell Witch and, like, a, and, and I felt like we fit with Weed Eater, too, which is kind of weird. I know that might sound kind of weird, but it is, like, the dirtiest fucking weed metal band to ever exist. You know what I mean? <laughs> And, and but I feel like we're gonna fit with Bell Witch just because they're just like so damn crushing all the time, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. It definitely sounds like there's gonna be a little friendly competition going on there to see who's gonna be pulling off the most crushing live set during this tour. Ah, oh, shit! It's nothing like that at all, man. They're gonna do their thing. We're gonna do our thing, and we're that's it. We're just gonna have a good time. It's not life. No competition at all. These are our fucking brand, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, and I definitely think that's the way it should be too. I mean, when you're going on these extensive tours like that, I mean, you want to be friends with everyone you're going on tour with or else it's going to be a terrible time being on the road yeah I mean, we've had a couple of tours like last year that we went on that was just fucking terrible we didn't get along with a, a couple of the people in the other bands it was a rough ass time so i'm glad that this one is just all among friends you know oh definitely yeah i mean uh, sadly it's not coming to my area in minnesota but uh you know it's like it's great to see that you guys are able to go out for almost a full month being able to tour together and just like bring some amazing doom to everybody yeah man i'm excited to do it i wish that we were coming to minneapolis i, I don't know where in minnesota you live but oh yeah in we, minneapolis you Okay, well, we usually play there, and I love that city, and um, the you know that band Hive from oh, yeah. there? All right, well, so that guitar, the singer and the guitar player Morgan and I are, are really old friends, and so uh, I always like to come through there and, like, play with them and see those guys, but it just didn't work out this time, but I think that we're going to try to come out there um, in the spring of next year. So. Oh, yeah, and I was just about to ask that, too. I mean, is there uh, any plans yet in the works for 2018 so far? Yeah, we have a bunch of stuff that we're trying to work out. Um, 
for spring and summer and uh, overseas touring and all this stuff. I just can't say anything about it because it involves other bands. So. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. Well, th- that makes me very excited, too. I mean, it's great to see that you guys are able, to, again, you know, just like being able to continue on as Primitive Man, being able to uh, tour as much as you guys do, and now the fact that you guys have a brand new full length to be able to tour behind and be able to add that much more to the set list and be able to just have, like, this crushing live show. I mean, it's so awesome to see. Thanks, man. We're lucky because we have jobs that let us leave. Well, kind of. They reluctantly let us leave. Sometimes we don't have them when we come back, but generally it's been okay. And, uh, you know, just going to keep doing it till we can't anymore. But I'm really excited and feel really lucky that we get to go out, you know? Yeah, definitely. And it, it, it helps that you guys do have the passion for the music as well. I mean, it'd be terrible if you guys were just, like, out there and just, like, writing this music you feel like you have to make rather than the music that you actually want to make. Well, I'll tell you what. If that were the case, we would definitely not be playing this shit. <laughs> because if I, if I were out there just, like, playing it to just get paid because I had to, we would not sound like permanent man <laughs> it's not you know you playing this extreme shit you have to have a passion for it like it, you know what i mean I, I i believe that anyone that's playing anything that's super heavy you have to have passion for it or you wouldn't be playing it yeah it's really true and you know it's again you know it's like i hear that all throughout caustic i mean from beginning middle to end you know it's just like i hear that passion and that that crushing sound that's going on and you know it's just like with all the years experience of like different bands and of course uh everything that you guys have gone through with primitive man i mean it's just a great accumulation of where you guys are right now and you know it's just like i imagine with the live setting and you know just like uh, having everything work together when it comes to that the the new songs are just going to sound amazing live i mean i i I hope so. We've been playing a couple of them on, um, we, we've done some shows out of town this year and we've played a couple of them and the responses were really good, you know, before we premiered anything. So hopefully now people would like know the songs and, and all that. And plus we're going to play only songs from Caustic. So I hope it doesn't disappoint the shit out of everybody, but it's not going to go. <laughs> Well, I, I, I know as a fan, like, I, I really do appreciate that you guys are uh, focusing on Caustic. I mean, besides the fact that you guys are uh, touring in promotion of that, I mean, there's so many songs that should be represented off that album live, and it's great to see that you guys are doing that. Well, and I appreciate that, man. I know that we're not the same, but, you know, like, I worry about it because I'm just like, well, you know, I don't go to see Neurosis to see them not play the doorway. <laughs> you know, so I worry about people being disappointed in our live set because we're playing all this new shit but I guess it's just how it goes you know well thankfully with that I mean with the album coming out tomorrow I mean there is so much that I mean there is enough time that uh, people should be able to check out uh, during this tour be able to pick up the new album and really get to experience the new album before they get to see it live yeah I hope so but we'll see either way we're going that's gonna be cool Oh, definitely. Well, you know, uh, thank you again so much for taking the time to be able to talk to me about everything that's going on in the world of Primitive Man right now. And of course, uh, talking about the brand new album, Caustic, which comes out tomorrow uh, through Relapse. Uh, I've gotten to enjoy this over the last week. And I've again, it's just like I really love where you guys are at right now. I mean, I love the production. I love the songwriting. Uh, the interludes, I think, really fit well with everything. And I'm glad to see uh, the mostly positive response that I've uh, seen for the album so far. And I just hope that continues on uh, throughout 2018 and up to the next uh, writing, album writing cycle. You know, just like uh, really getting the promotion it deserves and getting you guys as far along as you need to be because you guys are doing it right. And I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Well, man, thank you for the kind words. It's really nice of you to say. I, I can't thank you enough. And thank you for taking the time to interview me and, and all that, you know. 